Hello friends, it's Shari and today I'm making a tropical themed lantern out of paper. And this video is a bit long because this is quite a big project, but just stick with me because we're going to do a lot of different techniques. So I'm starting out with some alcohol inks and some alcohol blending solution, and I'm going to be using that on some translucent alcohol ink Yupo paper. And this is going to be the panels of the lantern that the light shines through. This is the look I am going for today. This was the first panel I made. But you can also do alcohol ink techniques on this Yupo paper with the felt alcohol ink blending tool. So for the ones I'm going to do, which is that more smooth look, I'm putting a whole bunch of the blending solution onto my translucent panel. And then I'm taking my three colors and just putting them all over. And I'm using Lemonade is the yellow, Peach Bellini is the orangey color, and Flamingo is this pinky red color. So I'm just putting that all over and then I'm going to use the blowing tool to move that around to get that smoother look. So you can see how that's going to move with that blending solution. I'm just adding a little more of that pink in there where I need it. You can just add color as you go. A little more of that orange. And then I'm actually going to pick it up and tip it a little so that color moves even more. And I'm trying to get it to sort of move in like a stripe versus just in a circle. So I'm blowing across my piece of paper versus just in one spot. So you can see how that's moving a little bit when I pick it up and tip it around. And then I'll just set this aside to dry. I'm going to be cutting this panel down a little bit, but this gives a good coverage across this whole panel. Of course, I am going to be making four of these panels, so you've seen two of those. And then for each side of the lantern, I'm also going to be using the new tropical backdrop die. I've cut four of those, one for each side. I'm going to do a little bit of inking on each of these. So these are cut from some cilantro cardstock. And then I'm going to do my inking with some Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide. The oxide ink sits on top of that colored paper really well and you get that nice dark shading on the outside edge of this die cut. And then it goes to that lighter green on the inside. And I just think this is a really cool look like it's brighter in the center where the sun might be shining through the leaves and darker out on the edges where you're under the canopy of the tree. So I'm going to do the same technique to all four of those die cut panels you saw earlier. And you can see here all four of those are finished and inked and really beautiful. Now for the structure of the lantern itself. I'm going to be building that with some rainforest cardstock and I'm going to be making two pieces that look just like this one here. So we're making two of those so I've already done one. And I'm just going to walk you through where the measurements for this lantern come from or what they are. So the sheet of paper total is 10 and 5 eighths wide by 6 and a quarter tall. And I'm going to write these measurements on here. We're going to have two folds, which are the dash lines. So 10 and 5 eighths long by six and one quarter tall. And then those score lines are going to be folded to where we have two panels that are five inches. And then that little flap is that extra five eighths. And that five eighths measurement comes from, that is the width of the frame we're creating. So it's gonna hide behind our frame. Then inside each of these panels, I'm going to cut out a rectangle. And this is where that light's going to shine through. Those rectangles are three and three quarters wide by five inches tall. And there is actually one of the rectangle, stitch rectangle dies that is this shape. So you could use a die to cut this out. But in case you don't have that die, I'm going to be using just my craft knife and a straight edge to cut these out. 
So I've already made the one and then I'm going to walk you through how I made the second. So I've cut this to six and a quarter wide. This is still 11 inches long at this moment. I'm going to score it at five inches and fold that down. Make sure that's nice and creased with my bone folder here. And then because my scoreboard is small, I'm going to leave it folded to do that second score line also at five inches. So right now my little flap that's left over is an inch. It's a little bit too wide and I will trim it down. But for now it's okay to leave it at that inch. You'll just see when you start to assemble it, it's a little too wide and it's going to peek into those openings we're cutting. So that's just why it needs to be cut down a little bit. So I've got all my fold lines properly. So you can see I have those two large panels and then that little skinny flap. And so this is where I'm going to cut that one down a little bit. I just think it's better to cut it after you've done your folds versus cutting it before. That's just my personal preference. So I'm taking it and lining it up to where it measures 5 eighths from the fold to the edge that I'm cutting. These are going to overlap on this, so that opening is slightly smaller, and the measurement for that opening came from me measuring from the inside part of that stitch frame to the inside part of that stitch frame. So that is where that three and three quarters came from, and the five inches. So that frame around the backdrop is going to be right on this cardstock. So I need a five eighths inch border around all the sides, to get that inside cut correct. So I'm just using my T-square ruler and I've measured 5 eighths from the left side, 5 eighths from that right side where the fold is, and then I'm just lining it up against the top to draw my pencil line nice and straight. And then I'm gonna measure in the other direction as well. So I'm going to measure 5 eighths inch from this left side and then 5 eighths inches in from the right side. And you just want to do the exact same thing with your measurements and your pencil lines on both panels. So I'm just going to take this all the way across because I know that one's in the right spot. And then I can do the same at the bottom down here. So I know it is really hard to see on camera because my pencil lines are really light and this is a very dark cardstock. But I've drawn that rectangle and that will be my guide to cut out my inside opening. And I'm just doing the same thing on the second one. I folded it because it's easier to line my ruler up against that fold. So I'm doing my vertical lines on both sides of that rectangle opening on this second flap. So I'm just using a straight edge and my craft knife and I'm lining it up with that pencil line which I realize on camera is very hard to see. It's a little hard to see in person just I had a shadow getting cast from my desk lights. And I'm just going to carefully cut that opening. Now it doesn't have to be completely perfect. If those corners cross over a little bit, it's fine. We're going to cover all that up with our beautiful die cut that we cut out and inked earlier. So don't worry about that too terribly much. And then of course, as I said before, there is a rectangle die that are these same measurements, which I'm gonna show you right here. So that one, I'm gonna pop it out, is actually the largest of the small stitch rectangles. So this is the one that's the same size. So you could use that die to cut out this opening as well if you're not comfortable cutting it with your craft knife and doing the measurements as I'm doing here. I just wanted to show you both ways so that you could use what you have in your stash. So now I have my two pieces that are cut the same with those measurements that we went over earlier. And these are those beautiful backdrops that I created and you can see how that's gonna fit right over that frame. What I'm doing with each of these is I'm turning it 
180 so that the leaves are not exactly the same on every panel. And I'm just putting a little bead of my liquid glue all the way around those edges, just really close to that cutout so that that stitch frame that's around this backdrop fits right over that opening. And that liquid glue allows you to kind of shift it around a little bit till you get it in the perfect placement. So I'm just gonna repeat that process on all four of these. You could also put the glue on the back of the die cut as well, just whichever works easiest for you. So you can see how that overlaps and you have a nice sturdy edge to put all those die cuts on. So as I said before, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the second piece. So everything I do on one, I am doing on the other. So I'm gluing that down with my liquid glue, shifting it around till it's in the right place. You can see how that liquid glue lets you do that. And then I'll do the same thing on that right side. And I've already made sure that my die cuts were turned 180 degrees so that they were different. I'm going to go ahead and put my double-sided tape onto that little flap. And I'm just going to double it up and have two pieces because it's wide enough for that. I'm not going to assemble my two sides to my lantern together just yet. But I just figured I would go ahead and put this adhesive on that little flap. So I'm just doing the same thing on both because they're both going to attach together. This makes, you know, the assembly of this is a lot like our little shadow box that we make with the dies, but just in a much bigger format. So now for my translucent UPO paper, it has dried and I'm going to be using the double-sided tape to adhere those as well. So on the back side of my panels, I'm just putting a piece of that double-sided tape on all four sides of my opening. And these panels are quite a bit larger than this opening, so they're gonna overlap and be right on that adhesive. And I decided to use this adhesive tape versus liquid glue with the Yupo paper because it is pretty slick, and I think it will just adhere better with the tape, and it will hold itself in place a lot faster. So I'm going to do that to the other one as well. And then I'm going to trim these down slightly because they are five by seven. So I already trimmed down those translucent panels so that they fit in our five by six and a quarter. So I just trimmed it a little bit so that there's not a lot of paper in the corners. And what I'm doing right now is I pulled off that liner paper from my tape and I'm putting some little dots of liquid glue on the back of my leaves. And this is just so it will stick down to that UPO paper and I won't have those leaves sticking out where they might get caught on something. So just a little bit of that liquid glue and it's gonna help hold those leaves down on the front side. You can see I've got my panels flipped, so you wanna make sure the color is facing out. And you can see how it's been trimmed down a little bit to be slightly smaller than that lantern side. And then you get this beautiful look with those leaves and that really brightly colored Yupo paper. So I'm doing the same thing to all of these with that little bit of glue just on some of the edges of the leaves. Again, I've already pulled off that liner paper from that double-sided tape. And now I can put my beautiful alcohol ink you put paper face down. And so when I flip it over, you'll see we have these beautiful panels with that warm glow in the middle and those beautiful green leaves out on the edges. 
So now for some of the decoration on the outside of the lantern, I'm going to be using the Happy Hibiscus dies. And I have cut the large and the small flowers from some sugar plum cardstock, which is this purple here, and some guava cardstock. And I'm just darkening up the edges of the flowers with a little bit of ink blending just to give them some more interest and some more definition. So I'm using that Dusty Concord Distress Ink on the purple, and then I'm using some Raspberry Lawn Fawn Ink on the pink one. And I'm just doing just the edges so it goes to that lighter color in the center. And then I'm also going to add some darker of that ink to one of those center die cuts. I've got them all cut out of guava, but I wanted it to be a little darker when it's layered onto that guava one. And then this one I'm just hitting very lightly to darken it up a little bit for that purple flower. For the stamens in the center, I've cut them from some sunflower cardstock and I'm just adding a little bit of spiced marmalade to the edges, or to the middle I should say, to the tip. And then to give them a little bit of shape, I'm just taking my glue tube and kind of rolling up those outside edges of the petals. So you just need something round to kind of roll this against. And then I can assemble them. So just a dot of glue in the middle of each one and then I can layer those center pieces right in the center. So I've got that guava piece that I've inked to make it a little darker for my pink flowers here. And then I also have a guava piece that I inked a little bit more lightly and that's gonna go in the center of the purple flowers. So since I have a lot of colors going on, I just kept my flowers all kind of the same, you know, just two color schemes here, just to be a little bit more simple. Then I can add a dot of glue to the center of all of them and add those stamens that were die cut and inked as well. And you can see I'm just putting them in the middle and then I kind of pulled them up a little bit so that they popped up from the flower too and everything has a little bit more dimension and is not so flat. And I will just scoot these aside for the moment. We're going to put those on there soon, but first I'm going to work on my silhouettes. So I've cut some of the vine dye border dies from some reinforced cardstock and these are going to go behind. And so the idea behind this is that if the lantern doesn't have the light inside lit, you don't really see these. And then when the light is lit inside, it's kind of a surprise. So you're going to see these vines and then you're going to see the silhouettes of some animals. So I've got the two cans. I'm also going to cut out one of those jaguars. But instead of using the dies, I just fussy cut these. I put them, I stamp them right onto some leftover Rainforest cardstock and cut them out. I'm not so sure that the color of the cardstock matters so much. It just happened to be what I had some scraps of on my desk because you're not going to see it. What you're going to see is just that it's blocking the light. Now I did use liquid glue on this first toucan and what I found out is that you can kind of see the glue through that translucent Epo paper a little bit. So I actually pulled him off. You can see here this is the silhouette look I'm going for so I went and got a flashlight so I could see what I was doing. Um, but you can see that liquid glue and so what I started using for my animals after the fact was some vellum adhesive. And you can see with the vine, I just put a dot of glue on the sides that's hidden by the frame. But for the animal, it has to be centered. This one's floating, it's not even on the vine. So I've got my vellum glue runner and that is how I'm sticking those down so that you don't see that liquid adhesive showing some spots through that translucent panel. And then I'm doing the same thing on that other piece. I've just got my flowers laid here because I know those are the corners I want them in. And this is letting me see kind of what space I have left for my vines and my animals. I trimmed off that one leaf because I felt like it was in the way of the tail of the jaguar. I didn't want it to get confusing. I'd rather see the outline of the tail. We're not going to miss that little leaf. So that is why I trimmed that off. And the fun thing with doing a silhouette like this is I flipped it over. It doesn't matter 
which side you glue down. So we're going to get the mirror image of the Jaguar. And then of course I'm going to do the same thing on my last panel here. So one dot of glue on each side of that vine. I'll trim off that excess that's hanging over the side. And then I've got one more toucan I'm going to sit on that vine. So now all my silhouette pieces are done. Well, actually not all. I added a little lizard because that lizard needs to be somewhere on this project because it's just too cute. And to see where the leaves were so that when his silhouette shows up, I use my flashlight to shine through. So now he looks like he's sitting on the leaf. So now I can assemble my two pieces together. I just wanted to get all that stuff glued down before I did that. Now I have not put the flowers on yet because they're kind of three dimensional. So I've pulled off that liner tape and I'm lining it up using my grid mat, lining up those two sides, making sure it's stuck down with my bone folder really well. And then I'm going to fold the two in and this will ensure that it lays flat. If you ever wanted to put this away, you can lay this back flat. I'm going to show you how I make it keep its shape, but it's not permanently that way. So if you wanted to keep this in a box of party supplies, it would lay flat. So I've got it popped open. I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid glue to add my hibiscus. And I actually got really smart and used the flashlight so I could see where the things were. I'm just gonna put it up at the top or at the bottom to shine some light through. And then I can see where my silhouettes are and make sure that I place my flower in a good placement for when the light is on. So this is the last flower of those four flowers. So now I have a flower on each side. And basically this lantern is complete. You can see all those silhouettes. However, I wanna make sure that it holds its shape and I actually decided I wanted to make a top to this so that it covers up the inside part that's not as pretty. So I've just cut some cardboard in a square that is the same size as this and it just fits right over it and makes a bottom. This is not glued though so it can be popped out at any time. And then a same size square that's going to go in the top but I'm going to put a piece of cardstock on it so we make a pretty lid for the lantern. So these cardboard pieces are 5 inches by 5 inches and this is the one that's going to be my top. So I'm cutting my cardstock to be five and a half inches by five and a half inches so that it will overhang the cardboard a quarter of an inch on each side. So you can see how this is smaller. So when that cardboard's down inside the lantern, this lid is going to overhang. But I want to decorate it a little bit. So I'm starting out with my wood grain backdrop stamps and I'm putting a tone on tone wood grain onto this cardstock using some peacock ink. And I'm just using my Misty tool to completely cover this with that wood grain. I'm going to do some stenciling on top of it so you're not going to see it too much, but I just thought it gave it a nice texture that went really well with this tropical look for the whole lantern. So the easiest way for me to do this backdrop is to peel the stamp off and re align it onto my cardstock and then just pick it up versus trying to move my cardstock because I just feel like this is easier for me for this particular one and especially because you're lining up those lines of the wood grain. You can see mine is well loved and very stained so it is hard for me to see sometimes so this is what works for me. So to cover this five and a half inch square, I'm going to have to stamp this down three times. So I've done two, which is maybe a little hard to see on camera. And then this is the third one, which I had to turn it just because my Misty wasn't quite big enough for a square this size. It was overhanging over into the hinges when I tried to do it at the top on this one. 
So now I've got my wood grain all over this five and a half inch square. You can see it there. And then now I'm going to do some stenciling with the Tropical Leaves background stencil. This is a two step stencil. So this is the first one. And I'm just using my media mat to hold everything in place. So I've got those magnets and then because this is a dark cardstock, I'm going to use the Distress Oxides, which are pigment based and they're going to sit on top of that dark color really nicely. So this is Peacock Feathers, which is the darker of the two colors that I'm going to use. So I'm using that for the stencil that has more leaves. So the majority of the leaves will be this darker color. And I'm just using a blending brush to blend that in so that everything's nice and soft and I don't catch any of those little details. You can see how this has a really cool look. And then I'm going in with the second stencil in the set. And for this one, I'm using Salvage Patina, which is a little bit lighter. And you'll see the difference when I pull my stencil away. I just think this has a really cool look. I kind of want to do this for a card now, to be honest. And then I'm going in finally with some Blue Jay Lawn Fawn ink, and I'm just going to darken up the edges. But the look of this was really cool when I got done, and I think it would make an awesome card front as well. So I really am going to have to give that a try. Just a light blending on the edges. I don't want to blend it in too much, but I did want to give it a little bit of a definition just like I did on each side of the lantern where my die cuts were. I just think a little bit of shading always adds so much more interest to a project. So once I've got all those edges shaded, I can just add this to that other cardboard square I had cut out, which is down inside my lantern. This is why you have to kind of make this lid so it's not going to fall down in there. And this is going to make it perfectly placed and secure on top of the lantern. And I'm just going to use some liquid glue to adhere that. Right to the back side of this panel that I decorated. Just center it up and now it can drop down in that hole and that cardboard will go down behind the cardstock of the lantern and you'll have that little overhang for the lid. So it just gives it a really nice finished off look and you don't see kind of the yucky part of the inside. So here is a look at that lantern. I brought in my little turntable so I could spin it around and show you. And then I'm just putting my little camping lantern down inside so that you can see all those fun silhouettes that just magically appear when you add a light in there. Obviously you need to use some kind of LED light for a lantern like this and not put a candle inside with that lid on it. Obviously we don't want to put any flames near a project made out of paper. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today and I hope it gives you some more ideas on things to do with your stamps and dies. I just think this is a really fun project. There is an older video where I made a Halloween lantern that is very similar a few different ways of doing it. So I hope maybe you will go back and look at that as well. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.